This episode is brought to you by Hover. Go to hover.com slash GOG to get 10% off your first purchase. Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Heard you had a week today, Brian. I've had a week. Uh, as anybody that listened to the previous show knows, um, my laptop went boom, thanks to uh, some spilled water on it. And uh, I had to do the show at your place uh, because I didn't have anything to do it off of and uh, off my iPad and good times. So uh, let me let me start with the non-tech stuff that's going on that, you know, because it's the grumpy old geeks law that you cannot have a computer disaster occur at a convenient time when nothing else is going on in your life. Well, that's how it goes. Yes, yeah, that's just how it goes. So that all happened on Monday. I went to your place on Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, my wife found out that a close colleague of hers had passed away unexpectedly in Toronto. So she took the red eye last night to fly out for a memorial, um, which meant I'm on daddy daycare duty full time. And uh, I usually don't do the morning shift with my son. And boy, oh boy, it takes an extreme amount of patience to get a three-year-old to do anything in the morning. Well, get that's not surprising. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's a three-year-old in the morning. Come so, on. So uh, congrats to her for all that. And then she's flying back uh, first thing Saturday morning, because then we are going to my uncle's memorial service. And my uh, aunt called me midweek when I was trying to deal with all this and, and told me that she would like me to speak. So I've been writing a eulogy while still dealing with all these tech problems. So good times. Good times. Anyways, on to all the things that I discovered about the Apple universe this week. Uh, I've, I've known, you know, I haven't been to an Apple store in a long time. And I know, you know, if you need the the Geek Squad, not the Geek Squad, the Help Desk, the Genius Bar, whatever they call it, uh, it's a good idea to to make an appointment online ahead of time because it, otherwise you're just going to sit there, you put in your name and you wait until they can take you. Uh, what I did not realize is that if you walk in with two grand and throw it down on the table and say, I would like that MacBook Air right there, they will say to you, uh, can I have your name, please? And we're going to put you in a queue And somebody will be with you in about 30 minutes to sell you the computer that you're looking at right now. Customer service of the future. Yes. So I did not have 30 minutes because I had hightailed it back from the valley at your place and I needed to go pick up my son. So I walked out annoyed and left and uh, came home and purchased it online for pickup. And about two hours later, I got a little ding text message saying my MacBook Air is ready for pickup. And um, I had to wait until my wife came home, went down. So now it's it's relatively late at night. And I'm like, ah, well, that's okay, because obviously a time machine backup, uh, you know, using the migration assistant, that's probably going to take quite some time. So it'll just run overnight and I'll wake up in the morning with a, with my computer back the way it was, just slightly smaller. That's the promise of the technology that we pay for. <laughs> that is the promise of the technology. Um, that is not what occurred. Uh, I went to bed and it said the nine hours were remaining on, on the migration assistant. I woke up in the morning and looked at the migration assistant and nine hours were still remaining. Oh, Jesus. So it had hung in some way, shape or form. So here we are. Nothing's working. Uh, I stop it. I restart it. It basically errors out a couple times. At this point, I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> and my wife is like, well, why don't you make an appointment for the Genius Bar? I was like, I'd have to take the time machine. I'd have to take the computer. And then I would have to wait the 10 hours or whatever there if yeah. they would even. <laughs> I'm like, this is probably not a possibility. I Google it a little bit and they say, you know, I see something that says, boy, doing time machine backups over Wi-Fi is not recommended because it craps out a lot and it takes forever. So plug in that Ethernet cable. And I'm like, there are no fucking ports on this computer. <laughs> I would love to do that, but there are no fucking ports. <laughs> so, dongles, man. It's all about the dongles. I ordered you. the dongle that, uh, well, that's the other thing about this computer. Like, I, I do miss the extra two inches. I'm sure I'll get used to it because it's a 13 inch screen and I had 15. It's forcing me to go into my room more and use my, well, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, yes, I did get the dongle that you recommended. So, that's nice. Still doesn't have an Ethernet port, so it didn't help. But, I have to say, this is a beautiful looking computer. I love the the Touch ID. Wonderful job, Mac, that you've taken such a beautiful piece of equipment and made it completely and utterly unusable <laughs> unless you slap on a Frankenstein bolt to the side of it that lets you actually yeah. plug stuff in. Yeah, I know. Um, it looks so ugly with this bolt on it, but it's the only way I could actually use the computer. 
<laughs> yeah, I can't believe you're doing uh, your time machine backups over Wi-Fi. Do you have like an old uh, air time capsule? Yeah, yeah, I've got the oh. old. Uh, it's the whole. It's the one that you know. It's the time capsule plus the router system. So that's what I've yeah. got. So hey, it's a backup, right? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> kind of fu- sorta. I, I I stop it all. I, I do I do a fresh. It says you better do a fresh install if one's crapped out. So I, I have to reinstall Mac OS fine. <laughs> then I start the migration assistant again. And this time I figure, okay, just documents and settings. I have a, I had a whole bunch of applications I don't really need anyways. This will be a cleaner install. It'll be nice. I'll only install the apps I need. That works. It takes seven hours, but all Jesus, my documents just for docs and just settings? for docs and settings, but it worked. Wow. So then I spent that evening. This is now Wednesday evening, reinstalling software that I use. And lo and behold, I had really, really old versions of software that you couldn't get downloads for anymore. So a lot of people got money out of me as I purchased updates and upgrades and new versions of software. (sighs) Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? One I wasn't going to do because everybody's trying to move to subscription models. I use Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel quite a bit, but I am not going to pay that subscription for it because I have a purchase copy and the one nice thing about the backup assistant i have to say is you can go in and you can grab individual files like it's not an all or nothing package that you bring over so after i did use the migration assistant to do all my documents and settings i was able to basically go in grab word grab excel grab the preference files grab the library stuff for it copy it all over and they work Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. So I am basically mostly back up and running. The reason I'm doing this show off my iPad is because I don't have the right fucking cable for my (laughs) monitor. So I ordered that yesterday or two days ago, and it was supposed to arrive yesterday. I was here all day yesterday working on my computer and... Not not a knock on my door, not a ring on my phone. I got the notification that nobody Sorry was there. Sorry we missed you. Sorry we missed you. <laughs> so I'm still waiting for my monitor adapter to be able to hook up my monitor. <laughs> oh man, your monitor does just doesn't have HDMI. Uh, this is a fairly old Dell one. It's I'm due for an upgrade with that as well. So okay, because yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I I like. I've got a 4K monitor and I've got a uh, just basically could just run HDMI yeah. through it. You can't get the 4K with the HDMI, but uh, it at least has an HDMI port. Right. So that little Frankenstein bolt has a yep. has an HDMI port on it, so it works well. But yeah, that sounds that sounds kind of par for the course nowadays. I'm sorry to hear it, but uh, yeah, I'm sure we've given a lot of people PTSD from your experiences so far. <laughs> so that was a good time. So I want to. I've got a bit of follow up with some other tech stuff. Um, while I didn't experience any Bluetooth weirdness when I did my iOS upgrade, my wife did, and she always has Bluetooth off, and she said it turned it back on for her. Okay. So that yeah, continues. I, the the, uh, the Bluetooth thing is a pain. I have to, I got in my car the other day and my car wouldn't recognize my phone. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Then I'm like, oh, Bluetooth. So I got to go repair my phone to my car. <laughs> so my car will work right. <laughs> yeah. And I have noticed that I have one recurring issue that's completely random with my iOS upgrade. Cellular data keeps randomly turning off. That's weird. I know. I'll be like out on my bike ride or driving to the fucking Apple store for whatever dongle I need now. And, you know, I won't get any emails or texts, which, you know, okay, fine. Yeah, that's good. (laughs) What's wrong with that? (laughs) And then as soon as I get home and reconnect to Wi-Fi, bing, 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 bing. And I'm like, oh, cellular data switched off again. It's happened to me like three times since update. Well, time for, well, it's time for a new phone for you anyway. I'm on an eight. I thought you were on a seven. No, I got an eight. Oh, okay. I'm fine. For now, I think. <laughs> okay. <There you laughs> Anyways, I thought you had a seven. That's been my week in a nutshell. All right. Well, let's get to some actual follow up okay. here. I got an email about the Yahoo customer data breach security thingy, Madu, about yes. the uh, the class action lawsuit. Yes. Yes, with oath. 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 Uh, so they've got a hundred and seventeen million dollar fund that they're uh, paying out from. Mm-hmm. Well. Basically, if I want to get my $100 Mm -hmm. or even up to Mm $358.80, it's the same thing as before with with the other ones. You have to prove that you You had credit monitoring. Owned that. Yeah. It's like they they make this just so easy for them to keep the money. What if I don't want credit monitoring service? What if I don't want it? It's such a joke. Yeah. It's such bullshit. But uh, it's out there now. It's at Mm yahoodatabreachsettlement.com if you want to go. It's not even worth filling out the form to even get free, you know, credit monitoring well, because everybody's got free credit monitoring now. Yeah. 
And we've talked before about DNA data mm-hmm. and how, you know, it's it's once you put it out there, it's out there. Yep. Right. Or once your uh, family puts it out there, it's out there. That's exactly. <laughs> we've got some more data. We've got some more DNA stories throughout the, the show today. But I got an email that says my heritage acquires Prometheus and SNpedia. I've used Prometheus in the past to upload my 23andMe data to get some, you know, just get some more human readable results right. on what it all means. So they've got it now, you know, and now my heritage has it because <laughs> Prometheus has gone out of business right. and been acquired. And they say that, uh, you know, they're not going to do anything with it. Uh-huh. But now I'm going to get a new I'm going to get a new my heritage account that's going to give me even more stuff. Great. That I didn't ask for that. I didn't want my data run against. Right. And so I went to Prometheus and tried to delete my data to delete my genome. Mm-hmm. Nope, can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do that. I have to I have to go through an email to get to security and have them delete it manually. But who knows if my heritage already has it and has ported it over and they're already running crap against it. It's like, <laughs> yep, yep. Once it's out there, it's out there. And honestly, it's like, okay, 23andMe already has it, which means everybody else probably already has it anyway or will at some point. So yes, the horses have left the barn. That is true. Yep. And we've made fun of Goop many, many times mm-hmm. on this show. Just because it's goop. And I saw this over at Ars Technica. So I, I did find this on a tech website. So <laughs> there's our tech tie in. Goop settles lawsuit and can no longer make health claims about vaginal eggs. Now, that that alone right there. <laughs> are eggs good for you? Are eggs bad for you? Well, we definitely know vaginal eggs don't do squat. <laughs> well, you do have to squat. Oh, you do kind of have to do. <laughs> Ew. So according to the Santa Clara County District Attorney Jeff Rosen, the company claimed that its jade and rose quartz eggs after inserted into the vagina could balance hormones, regulate menstrual cycles, prevent uterine prolapse and increased bladder control. Goop advertised that the inner judge flower essence blend, also a blend of essential oils meant to be taken orally or added to bathwater, could help prevent depression. Well, the company has now agreed to refund any customers who bought the eggs or the flower essence, (laughs) and they have to pay out $145,000 in civil penalties. But here's the kicker. Goop has also agreed to no longer make any claims regarding the efficacy or effects of any of its products without possessing competent and reliable scientific evidence that substantiates the claims. All right. So I don't think that'll matter to anyone because the people buying this stuff don't care anyways. Right. But that's not the point. The point is that somebody's out there looking out for these morons who are buying things to shove up their hoo-ha thinking it's going to give them enlightenment. Snake eggs. Snake eggs. Exactly. (laughs) So if they could only prevent measles. (laughs) In the news. Now, this was a head scratcher, Brian. I saw this over at TechCrunch, and the headline is Facebook promises not to stop politicians' lies and hate. Well, I'm pretty sure that's not how they they worded it. Facebook confirms it won't fact check politicians' speech or block their content if it's newsworthy, even if it violates the site's hate speech rules or other policies. All right. Well, that's one way to (laughs) avoid any problems on your end, I guess. Yep. It's no longer against our terms of service. I'm scratching my head. I am too. I'm scratching my head. What's the point of having hate speech rules and policies if politicians can just post things that are against the policy? Well, and and then where do you define politician? Like if I if I'm if I ran for like a local board, I'm a politician. Don't catch right? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> or I'm in a union. I guess I'm a politician. That how do you you can't just make this for one group of people and not for everybody else? You can't have different standards. mm Hmm. So now it's it's basically it's game on. But by seeking neutrality, Facebook may become complicit in the misinformation and malevolence some politicians will use it to spread. It leaves users to fend for themselves as they try to discern fact from fiction and opinion from reality. I thought they were trying so hard to make everything peachy keen for this upcoming election. Yeah, I, and now they're just like, fuck it. They yeah. threw their hands up. And we're out. I, I think you you that's the exact right analysis. That seems to really be the case because all we were hearing was, oh, don't worry. We're going to fix it. We're going to work really hard. We're going to spend a lot of money. We're going to have a board of ethics. We're going to have all these sorts of things. And now they just went, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. They're like, we give up. We can't take it anymore. Yep. We just can't take it. Great. Well, oh, that's man. that's going to be awesome. I'm sure this is going to work out well. Yeah, 
And uh, we got some Uber news today. Uber has launched Uber Incubator to help develop new products and services. Hmm. So there is basically a startup incubator. Right. And what they're going to do is they're going to help, you know, people use the Uber platform to come up with new business ideas and test them rapidly to see if they're going to work. And then, you know, probably take a percentage because right now Uber has no idea how they're going to make money in the future. That's anything besides Uber Eats. That's right. Because, you know, the the actual car service is on a, a, a fairly steady decline into the abyss. Incubator tip number one, you don't have any employees, only contractors. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and they're also starting an entrepreneur in residence program. They've got all sorts of things they're trying to do, but I, I'm pretty sure this is just like, we got to take some of this money that we still have yep. and try and find a new business model. So let's get some more brains in here yep. who, who can help us figure this out. And then, you know, hopefully one of these will hit and we will make money that way and we will pivot. That's what incubators are for, man. You get like a hundred companies in there. One hits 99 fail. Then you make your money off the one. Just like a record label. Yep. So, and here's the big one for the week. When rides go wrong, how Uber's investigations unit works to limit the company's liability. This was over at the Washington <laughs> Post and it's been making the rounds. Did you read this I one? I did. I did. Did th did this not anger you immensely? I've been angered immensely by Uber since they first showed up. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, this is, is this is nothing new. This is I I'm I am not surprised. I am not uh, this is Uber being Uber. They they don't give a shit. No, they don't. And they have a special investigations unit, and it's 80 people in uh, Phoenix, and they're the ones that uh, you get to talk to if, you know, you've had a problem with a driver. Mm -hmm. And here, here's the real kicker, though, because they got people who work there, and they got them on the record talking about what the job is mm -hmm. and, you know, where they're at. It says the agents are forbidden by Uber from routing allegations to police or from advising victims to seek legal counsel or make their own police reports, even when they get confessions of felonies. Wow. Said a former investigator. <sighs> yep. And it, it's been corroborated by interviews with other investigators, alleged victims and plaintiff's attorneys. So. And she goes on to say, Uber's investigative process is broken, according to people who have worked there, stymied by Uber's insistence that its drivers are independent contractors and not employees, and therefore it isn't responsible for their actions. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and here's the thing. Yeah, they've got guys who had, you know, three strikes and still let them drive for them. And then the guy goes on to rape somebody. It's like. You can't turn a blind eye to that. Look, just because you don't want to be liable, and it's a contractor. We have nothing. It's, it's not our problem, man. Not our problem. And, you know, I guess this is another reason why they, they want people to always be contractors. Exactly. Exactly. Completely limits liability. We see your game, Uber. We've seen your game since day one. Other people are catching on. You're, you're Finally. Finally. I don't think Uber's going to be around too much longer, at least not in the form it is now. They're going to be around for a lot longer. I'm, I'm sorry, but they're not going away anytime <sighs> soon. Sad. It's a Hydra. Once you chop the head off of this one, another one will pop up. We still have Lyft because all the people that get kicked out of Uber go drive for Lyft because they don't share their data with any of the background check companies because they can't because that would mean that they know about what these people have done. <laughs> right. You know, it's just like. It's, you know, they're, they're Uber rape mobiles for the most part, it seems. And I love this. This comes from uh, Tracy Bredeen, Uber's global head of women's safety. At the end of the day, we're not the judge and jury to determine whether a crime has occurred. We're here to gather information, make a business decision. We're not law enforcement. Right. Fuck you. Yep. Well, there you go. Uh, another reason to delete that app. Delete that app, people. I've, I don't have it on my phone anymore. Uh, Let's talk about another Hydra, Amazon. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, we do have some hope for Amazon. Bezos signed on, agreed with the the whole new CEO deal where we're not just about we're not just about shareholder value, we're going to have higher values. He's he's shown he's taken some promising steps. So, mm -hmm. I'm wondering what you think about this one. Now, we've talked a lot about Amazon's recognition software in the past, which, you know, facial recognition stuff. Um, they've marketed the tech to corporations, law enforcement agencies, and this has led to outrage both inside and outside of Amazon um, because, you know, they're they're marketing it to ICE and other things, and, and people are like, hey, hold on a second. First off, this technology is not ready for prime time, as we all know. And secondly, there's some dubious agencies we're dealing with at this point, and stop it. Um they haven't. Maybe they will. We'll see what happens. But Bezos did just drop a bombshell. Um, he wants regulation. 
He thinks the government's taking too long to do it, so they're going to draw up their own principles. Okay. Are they any good? (laughs) Well, there's no details yet. Oh, damn. (laughs) I want to read them. Yeah, me too. Well, here's where I'm going to be hopeful. I'm going to be hopeful that Bezos has taken this to heart. This whole, we're not beholden to just shareholder value. We need to be good people, good corporate entities. We need to do the right thing for humanity. So hopefully he will get a good board of people together to draft some decent legislation. Hopefully it'll be good. We'll see. We'll see. But hey, they're being proactive. And I'm, I'm wondering if they're talking with Microsoft on this, too, since Microsoft wants regulation around it. Maybe they should put their heads together and come up with something together. I agree. I, I think that would be a good idea because we know Microsoft has had a pretty good track record for the most part. For the most part. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. And uh, we spent a lot of time talking about all these the tech unicorns of 2019. And I will include we work in this because they did as well, even though it's not a tech company. I know, but you got to admit the the news this week that they ousted the, the CEO was pretty damn satisfying. <laughs> Is it though? Because it's just Uber all over again, isn't it? Like they got rid of you, you cut off the head, and you're still a shit company. It's Kalanick 2.0. Exactly. Anyways, I found this page over on Recode slash Vox slash whatever they are, and I'm going to keep doing that because it's so confusing because they have multiple logos on their page now. But I bookmarked this one because I think this is great. How the tech unicorns of 2019 are doing on the stock market. Some 84% of U.S. tech companies that went public last year did so without turning a profit. The last time unprofitable tech companies went public at this rate was 2000, the year the dot-com bubble burst. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. In 2019, these companies are riding high on venture capital money and investors' hunger for growth above all else. Even more concerning, uh, all economic signs are pointing towards a recession, and these companies do not do well during recession recessions because the money doesn't keep flowing in you have to rely on your own profits which they don't have so this page is basically an ipo tracker that will update stock prices every few minutes um they've got lyft zoom pinterest uber fixer slack and peloton fiverr not fixer sorry sorry, fiverr (laughs) I'm reading off my iPad, which is a bit further away than normal. Sorry. (laughs) And they're going to be adding WeWork if it goes public and Airbnb when it goes public. So it's going to be a cool, quick visual perspective on how these companies are doing. And obviously, uh, none of them are doing particularly well. Awesome. I got to I got to make a little widget for that. So it just sits in the background and I can chuckle of all the public (laughs) stocks on their tracker right now. Only Zoom is making a profit. The other companies are not. Yeah, Zoom has a product that's been road tested and they spent a long time doing it. The audio sucks, but it does what it's supposed to do. It does I what mean, it says on the do it for high quality. Yeah, I mean, if you want to make a quick video conference with a bunch of people, it's great. Yep. But yeah, there you go. Now, Match is back in the news. Okay. Oh, God. We've known for years that the, the Match group are a bunch of skis balls mm-hmm. and slime bags. Well, the FTC is finally, you just they're done. <laughs> The FTC says that most consumers aren't aware that 25 to 30 percent of match registrations per day come from scammers. And that includes romance scams, phishing scams, fraudulent advertising and extortion scams. Mm -hmm. During some months from 2013 to 2016, more than half the communications taking place on match were from accounts the company identified as fraudulent. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, it basically goes on to say that they just didn't do anything about it. And Match, of course, is coming back, says, we try, we're just, we try. We're just a platform. Yeah. No, I mean, they, they, <laughs> they say, they say that 85% of potentially improper accounts, they're kill, they kill them in the first four hours, mm-hmm. and uh, 96% of the accounts within a day. That's bullshit because the numbers don't match up, right. obviously. So that's why the FTC has taken them yep. to court. So we'll see how this is going to play out. I don't uh, see myself ever needing to use a dating app. I'm I'm, fair, I'm pretty happy in my marriage at the moment. But if I did, I think I would try <laughs> to find one that basically required proof of proof of identity. It's it, it's possible. Yeah, I don't know any that do, but because I don't know any dating apps. If anybody's listening that are on the dating apps that do require proof of identity, let us know some names so we can put them in the show notes. This episode of Grumpy Old Geeks is brought to you by our good friends at Hover. Look, you need your own domain name. If not for your business, then for your family. You're just way cooler if you can drop an email address with a custom domain name. Trust me, I do it all the time. Hover is the single best place to buy your domain names. If you've ever had to buy a domain from any of those other registrars, you know how difficult it can be. Terrible interfaces and a constant barrage of upsells make it almost impossible to even just find the domain. Hover has an incredibly clean and intuitive user interface without all the insane upsells. 
And you know me, if you've listened to the show for a while, I think life is too short to use ugly software, and Hover delivers on beautiful design and ease of use. They have free Whois privacy on supported domains, which you usually have to pay to keep your details private, but not with Hover. And every month they have great sales on some awesome top-level domains. Like right now, you can get .design, .inc, .online, .site, .space, .store, .tech, and .website, all for huge discounts off the regular price. Now, these prices do change often, so make sure you check their on-sale page when shopping for your domain. And Hover has over 400 domain name extensions to choose from, including all the classics to fun niche extensions. The days of having to spend a fortune on .com domains is totally over. My main domains, all new extensions, because it's just the new normal, as the kids say. It also lets you get something more aligned with who you are as a company, individual, or family. It's just a breath of fresh air in a market that's traditionally been one of the worst to use on the internet. So get started today. Go to hover.com slash GOG and get 10% off your first purchase. That's hover.com slash GOG to get your awesome domain name today and get 10% off your first purchase. Security? Ha! We're back this week with Dave Bittner from the CyberWire podcast. The CyberWire is a free, community-driven cybersecurity news service based in Maryland. Dave is also co-host of the Hacking Humans podcast along with Joe Kerrigan, where they take on social engineering. I need a breath. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> so, Dave, did you see uh, Did you see me wearing your, your Maryland swag? I did. I thought, you know, it's funny. My first reaction was... I didn't send Jason a hat. <laughs> <laughs> but you sent me a sticker. I did send you a sticker, which you put on a hat, which is very clever of you. So, yes, <laughs> until you wash it. Yeah. I'm just imagining you like strutting down the street with your all of your Mar- your Maryland shirt and your Maryland hat and your Maryland flag, just with some the, the Maryland uh, state song blaring behind you, you know. <laughs> and everybody in California has no idea what right, that is. Right, exactly. <laughs> what, who yeah. is that? Who is that disturbed young man? Had an Oriole sitting on my shoulder, chirping right. away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It was eating some steamed crabs or what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds good. I'm down <laughs> yeah, for that. Yeah. yeah. See? See? <laughs> Better than that Guinness blonde that they make in Maryland. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some uh, listener f- questions, actually, on one of the topics that we talked about before. And this comes from Liam. Hello from the land down under. I've been a listener for two years now and enjoyed every bite of it. With a Y. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Question about the so-called burner emails. Is there a service you use or do you just create a free email with Google or Yahoo? Keep up the good work and stay grumpy. I don't do anything nefarious enough to need a burner email. Oh, Brian. <laughs> uh, Dave, I know you use a different service. Uh, I put a few in the notes here. Are, uh, is one of these one that you use? Uh, no, no. I, I, would say I just spin up uh, Gmails if I, need to, if I need something disposable. That's the easiest, I think. Okay. Well, we've got a couple here in the show notes. We've got Mail Drop, Mailinator, Temp Mail, and Gorilla Mail. So give those a shot if you want a service. Or if you're like Dave, just spin up a new Google Mail. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Google, this is an interesting one. Google wins case as court rules right to be forgotten is EU only. So there was a lot of news about people who were saying, hey, we went to Google and said, take us off the Googles uh, for the EU members. And Google's like, okay, we did it. You're out. But only for people that live in the EU. If I'm in the United States, I can still search on you and still find the stuff that the people in the EU can't see. And they were like, Sacre bleu, that's not fair. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and so they went to court over it. And the court has ruled that, no, no, we only have jurisdiction in the EU. So go suck on a baguette, Frenchy. <laughs> wow. That is, um, that's unfortunate. Actually, uh, yeah, I, I would. I, I would prefer I think it, it not I think work it that makes way. Sense. Well, well, it, let me. I mean, it does geopolitically, but it's not what you'd hope for. Let me just first comment that no one frames a geopolitical story quite like Jason does. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot of listeners in France, Jason. Well, we, we had, had a lot of <laughs> listeners in France, Jason. <laughs> right. I don't. I, I don't even know if this guy's in France that sued him. So I was just making that yeah. up. Yeah. So. Uh, what strikes me is that you could spin up a VPN, tell them you're in the U.S. Yep, and search where search yep. for your next door neighbor, and right to be forgotten is meaningless. No longer, then, yeah, right to be forgotten has been forgotten. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. So it's yeah, it's meaning it's meaningless. It's basically now meaningless. So I wouldn't go that far. Who's going to spin up a VPN and do it? Everybody. 
especially if you go to gog.show slash VPN. <laughs> of course, of course. I tell you what, go tell your mom. Mom, go spin up a VPN and search for me in, in Yeah, Canada. but my mom is probably not searching the neighbor next door. It, it, it's the generation oh, come that, on. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, maybe she is. She's Exactly. <laughs> I don't know, but, uh, uh, you know, this is for the more savvy generation that's that's doing the deep searches and dives on people, and, and they're savvy enough to get a VPN. It really does make the right to be forgotten completely non-existent. Well, here's the thing. Nobody would have ever known if these guys didn't get a bug up their ass and sue Google for it. Right. Everybody would have just assumed that it was gone from the internet for good and wouldn't have gotten a VPN and tried to search anywhere else. Hmm. Now we know. Yeah. You know, that's the, what is it, the Barbra Streisand effect? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's their own damn fault. Hmm. Now, this one, uh, Dave, I think this one's right up your alley. We, uh, I'm sure you've covered this on the CyberWire. Botnet uses recent vBulletin exploit to block other hackers. So this is not unusual behavior for for botnets um and in fact uh we've seen there there's some malware i can't remember off the top of my head which one it was it was probably two years ago or so there was one that famously when it found its way into a system and decided it was going to take up residence in there to do its its botnetty badness um show title therefore if you want it um, <laughs> I like um so one of the things it would do would was to check to see if there was any other malware in there, and if there was, it would remove it. Right, and patch the system and patch kind the, of get right. everything up to date. So it, yeah, it basically went in, cleaned house, got the system as as pristine as it could be, so the reliability of its own botnet would be assured, and uh, then would do the things that it did. So um, this sort of thing is not new, um, but it is interesting. Um, it's the kind of thing we see a lot with these guys doing botnets, actually. Oh, that's interesting because the, when I first read the title, I thought this was one of the ones where the botnet was going in and patching V Bulletin, so the it was no longer exploitable. Mm-hmm. But no, no, it's the other way around. They're just saying, no, we got here first, right? You know, <laughs> right. this is our playground, kid. Go find a new corner. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So You're right. Yes, that is so what, what they're I, doing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that is pretty much it. I just I like the ones that were going in and just, you know, being white hats and trying to fix everybody's thing. We talked about that one white on the bots. show too. Yeah. And yeah. then there was the other extreme of that. There was the one that was going around in bricking devices that were vulnerable and they were yeah. using the rationale that better to be bricked than turned into a botnet. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a dick bot. Yeah. <laughs> White yeah, bots and dick so bots. Uh, you know, I guess the going around and destroying other people's equipment uh, that falls Maybe astray of the that that's might not be legal. Abuse act, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Well, the problem is even the ones that went in and cleaned up and actually patched the systems were, were ran afoul of the yes. computer fraud and abuse yeah, act. Yeah, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Yep. So uh, if you're still using V Bulletin, welcome to 2019. <laughs> I was going to say, is anybody? I remember using V Bulletin ages and ages ago. Wow. In the 90s when yeah. it first came out. Yep. DoorDash has been breached. Yes, I got, uh, I got an email and I didn't even remember I had a DoorDash account. I, d- I did because I, I talked about it on the show. All my food came upside down every time I worked from DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got the notification. But the thing is, you know, they have a password reset link in the, yep. the list here. I looked in my one password. I don't have it because I made the username and password in the app. Right. So it never made it to one password. So I don't even know what my username is, what email I used to sign up with it, nothing. <laughs> so I tried all my email addresses. I couldn't find it. So I don't know what, what the hell's going on. But I got the email and I tried the email address that they sent the email to. And they still couldn't find an account. So hmm. I don't know what the hell's going on over there. Somebody <laughs> dashed off with my my username, apparently. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I don't think I have any experience with DoorDash. It's uh, it's hard to know you for don't, sure. Don't, don't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my, my oldest son got banned from them because I think he complained one too many times. I think they're pretty quick with the banning <laughs> over there. So who knows? But Oh, maybe that's why I'm not there because I complain <laughs> every time. <laughs> doesn't sound like you. Um, (laughs) uh, So related to this story, um, Zach Whitaker posted over on Twitter that uh, DoorDash has um, in their, um, what do you call these things, guys? Robots.txt file. Yeah, the robots.txt file to disallow uh, the page on their site that has the notice of the security breach so that Google can't 
index it. Oh, clever. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> huh? <laughs> nice work. Yeah. Now, we've talked about uh, genetic testing and all the good stuff. We talked about it earlier in the show, even. And now the Justice Department has issued draft rules on using consumer genetic data in investigations. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting, I think. Yeah. Uh, trying to, I guess, set some boundaries proactively. So be nice. So as to not have them put upon them. Yeah. 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 Here, here's, a, here's a little quote. Prosecuting violent crimes is a department priority for many reasons, including to ensure public safety and to bring justice and closure to victims and victims' families, said Deputy Attorney General Jeffrey A. Rosen in a statement. Mm -hmm. We cannot fulfill our mission if we cannot identify the perpetrators. Forensic genetic genealogy gets us that much closer to being able to solve the formerly unsolvable. But we must not prioritize this investigative advancement above our commitments to privacy and civil liberties. And that is why we have released our interim policy to provide guidance on maintaining that crucial balance. Most critically, the department guidelines clearly state that a suspect shall not be arrested based solely on genetic association generated by a genetic genealogical service. All Boom. Right. So you've yeah. got to have you got to have more more dirt as it was. Yep. And, this, and yeah. this is just a little bit of extra evidence. This reminds me of uh, when I guess seatbelt laws came into to be a thing, at least around here. Uh, you couldn't pull someone over just for having their seatbelt off. You had to get them for something else. Yep. They and then you the could write them a ticket California. for, yeah, then you could write them a yeah. ticket for not having their seatbelt. Now, I also think similar to that, if a police officer wanted to pull you over for not having your seatbelt on, They'll find a way. <laughs> to, <laughs> they do tend to, yes. Yeah, follow you they? home. <laughs> and so I wonder how that's going to apply here. In other words, if they have some sort of genetic link, how hard they'll is it? To they'll find, find some other evidence else. somewhere. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know the answer. To that. I mean, it says if a suspect is identified using genetic information, the sample must be directly compared to the forensic profile that has already been uploaded to the FBI's uh, CODIS system, the Combined DNA Index System. Mm -hmm. So they have to, it has to match something they already have on file, which means that, you know, they'd probably have to go back and get a subpoena to get their DNA data, run it, then put it in the CODIS system, then arrest them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought this uh, comment from um, Natalie Ram, uh, she's an assistant law professor at the University of Baltimore. Um, she said, we, Local are, gal. we are nearing a de facto national DNA database. Uh, we don't choose our genetic relatives and I cannot sever my genetic relation with them. There's nothing voluntary about that. Here, here. Yes, I know many <laughs> relations I would like to sever my genetic ties with, but <laughs> you're kind of stuck. Once you're stuck. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, at least they're being proactive. That's, I, I think this is good. They're trying to at least say that, you know, we're not going to just willy nilly scrape up everything and, you know, go back to all of these cold cases. Mm -hmm. But it's a good it's a good starting point, I think, for the discussion. I think so. I, I agree. I, I think it's good to have guardrails on this stuff. And it's good that they recognize that, that they're yeah. not they're not going as far as they can before they get slapped back. They're actually it seems like they're being thoughtful about it and trying to get ahead of it. So. I like it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Amazon ring comes up here pretty regularly and mm -hmm. everything around that. Uh, there was a story recently, this was from CNET, and it was about a plan that ring had, they have since abandoned, where they were going to use 911 calls to automatically activate the cameras. No, 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 so, no, no, no. <laughs> in other words, somebody calls 911 near you, and every camera within range of who knows what the range would have been, but within a certain range of that 911 call starts recording. Right. And then the police come to your door and ask you very politely if they can have the footage. I Or if you opt in, I think they just, they just get take the it footage. right away. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a no, no. So I, explain <laughs> to me, Brian, you're because I'm not having the strong uh response to this that that you are in that i i guess if you opted into this i could see the value of it so explain to me what's making you have that reaction well i would never opt into it anyways and and it's not 
my reaction is based solely on I hate the idea of of company of, of once I buy something not being fully in control of it. Mm. I, at a visceral level, it bothers me the very idea that I could have a camera that I paid for for my own use so I can see who's at my door on my phone that somebody else, some other entity, entity is able to control that system. I do not like that. Sam, I am. <laughs> it re- it, I don't know why it bothers me so much. And I know I'm starting to become very old school because, because it doesn't really seem to bother other people as much as it bothers me. But just the very concept that anything that I have purchased and I own is being controlled by somebody unknown to me at any time really bothers me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jason, what about you? I would opt in for this if you could do it on a per camera basis. Mm. Like if if it was right. my front facing camera outside the house and my the cameras like that point to the street that you know cover my cars. Not my not not I don't have multiple cars. The cars <laughs> in the, the household. <laughs> right. I I gotta I gotta put a camera. I gotta put a hundred dollar camera on my Veyron out back. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't want it to trigger the one in my backyard because that covers the entire backyard, including the hot tub, which, you know, hot there could, be, mm-hmm. could be some nasty white man ass showing up on that ring camera that <laughs> right, the cops could then right. see. But if it was for the, the outside facing cameras, I would totally opt into that. I don't see a problem with that as long as I can select the cameras that they can trigger. Mm hmm. I tend to agree with with what you say, Jason. I, I think as long as I could opt in. Um, I can see the value in this. I can see the public good in something like this. Even police state slippery slope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even to trigger the recording. I don't know. I yeah. Uh, can you tell? I, I, I just don't want. I I don't <laughs> want unknown fingers on the button that control things that I own. Yeah. No, I get That's you. That's reasonable. I get you. That's reasonable. Absolutely reasonable. Yeah, most of these services, they can probably still turn it on already and not tell you. That's I'm sure the, they can. The <laughs> I'm sure they yeah. can. So, I mean, I honestly, I wouldn't have a problem with it just because there's so many break-ins in my neighborhood. I would love to catch these bastards. Mm-hmm. And if if it means like I drain a little extra battery here and there, and I would like a notification every time that it is turned on because that means something's going on in my neighborhood and I would want to know what's going on. It would also, you know, behoove them to say, let me... Let me look at the footage before I turn it over. Just don't automatically let them have access to it. Here's an idea. What if you got an alert on your phone that said something popped up that said 9-11 in your area, enable camera, yes or no? There you go. That's all you need. Would that do it? Brian? If it was opt-in. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. And they say in the thing that this was going yep. to be an opt-in system. I'd be right. okay with that. I'd want some very stern promises that if you have opted out of this, they cannot control your systems at all. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think if you combined that and also it didn't automatically turn the footage over, it's still up to you as to whether or not you want to turn the footage over. In other words, even if you said yes to the pop up on your phone, it started recording then, but you still had to you had the ability to review the footage and choose whether or not to give it to them. Well, yeah, yeah since, that's what I was saying. That would be a nice, nice thing to have because it's like uh, there might be something I don't want. Since this Pandora's box has already been opened, I think that's best case scenario. That's mm-hmm. that I would be OK with that. Mm-hmm. Well, related to that, um, someone this came by on my Twitter feed. I thought it was interesting. I don't recall having seen this. And Jason, I thought for you in particular, uh, you might be interested in this. It's a, an open source software project called ZoneMinder. Are you familiar with this? I am not. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, so this is an integrated set of applications which provide a complete surveillance solution allowing capture, analysis, recording, and monitoring of any CCTV or security cameras. Why don't any of these companies have a sense of humor and just brand themselves Big Brother? (laughs) (laughs) Because it's copyrighted. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't the statute on that coming out? That's got to be 50 years old. Yeah. Well, it's a probably 120 years thanks to Disney now. Oh, so that's right. So I was thinking yeah. in, in your case where you had some cameras that you felt like they weren't triggering fast enough, um, the fact that this is all open source, by their own admission, you have to be a little techie to, to know how to install this sort of thing, but you certainly fall into that kind of category. And yeah. uh, it seems like it has a lot of interesting little plugins and tools and since it's all open source, it um, might be interesting because you have a lot of cameras. You have old cameras laying around that you don't really use anymore, right? 
Yeah, and I have ones that can be used with this. Like a lot of these ones, like the Logitech cameras and the the Ring cameras, you could probably couldn't use with this. You have to have actual standalone cameras. And I've got a bunch of Amcrest cameras that would definitely work with this. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. it seems there's yeah. Things, things in there like some uh, there's facial recognition stuff. I think you can get license plate scanning. There's it seems like different people are doing different types of plugins for it. But the fact that it's all open source and you can dial it in is interesting. Yeah, license plate readers, facial recognition, all of the things that we've been railing against in this segment, uh, now we're all happy about. Well, Let's get it installed. Hey, Let's get we it can going. do it ourselves. <laughs> <That's> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, you can even run it on a Raspberry Pi. Nice. <laughs> Great. But it does. It, it says right here, advanced AI-powered detection. Oh, yay. Well, as long as until... Big Brother is me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to go over to your place next time. <laughs> right. Well, how many how many cameras did you count when you were here? Uh, at least nine. <laughs> no, they're not nine. <laughs> uh, wait, wait a second. Yeah, I think there is. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. Oh, wait, I was off by one. Totally. Yeah. Well, actually, no. no I was way off base. Eight's not excessive no, at you, all. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you didn't go in the house. If you go in the house and count those, there's 11 here. Huh. Oh, that was just the outside of the house. I see. Uh, yeah, that's just the outside. There's eight. Well, there's there's it's spread between inside the studio, outside the studio, and then the front of the house, on the side of the house. Yeah. Jason is I, a surveillance I, I, state. I kind of am. Yeah. <laughs> fun you know fun. jason one thing i'll share with you that um that i experimented with um on i have a my house backs up to some parkland and i have a back deck and i was having trouble with people stealing things off of my back deck like uh, turtles uh, all those turtles you stole <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, bicycles were being stolen my kids bicycles were being stolen off the back deck and um oh man yeah so one of the things i did uh was rig up a um, with the smart system that we have in the house for controlling the lights and those sorts of things, I rigged up a motion detector combined with a that. So I had a motion detector that triggered a switch, like a, an outlet, a, a, an AC outlet, which powered up a basically a, like a, a big pumpkin blinking red light. Uh-huh. So anybody comes onto the deck, this light starts blinking. Okay. Ooga, 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 <laughs> right? Um, but it was really, it was was not expensive to do, but I thought it was sort of an extra, um, hey, somebody's watching and, you know, it's being triggered by motion to, to help uh, convince people to maybe explore someone else's deck than mine. Well, I got two options here. We, the new Amazon Echo Bear Trap <laughs> is that you can put it at the bottom of the stairs. That might be good for you. Uh-huh. And uh, you could probably get like a surplus MRAD somewhere to just you know blast them with sound when they come up and jiggle their intestines once they step on the deck and they're not authorized well i do all right i i (laughs) I do already have a uh an electric fence um wire going around because there's it's actually two decks that are stacked up on top of each other and the top deck is screened in and i was having trouble with raccoons tearing off the screens to come into the screened in deck which let me tell you when you walk out into your screened in deck and you're not expecting to come face to face with a raccoon not fun so um i got serious and got myself a uh an electric fence charger ran a little wire around the perimeter of the top deck and haven't seen any raccoons lately <laughs> <laughs> wait you so, say uh, your wife's not going out there and unplugging it so the raccoons crawl back in so what was it bury the raccoon guy can come back no. when oh, you're not at oh, home? No. oh right right no, this is this is actually a different set of raccoons this is uh Oh, these actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Extraction oh, fluid? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Extraction fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, I need Barry to come back uh, to uh, inject some more of his extraction fluid. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I, the point is I am totally capable of taking things to the extreme, going off and <laughs> spending too much time on Amazon figuring out how to how to uh, come up with an extreme solution to a minor issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're nerds, man. Yeah. This is, that's what that's makes what it fun. That's what we do. Right. I, I say to the guy who has 11 security cameras. <laughs> and right. scoffed at me because I said nine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's way off. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, good luck with it all. Let me, if you if you do explore this zone minder thing, I'd, I'd love to know what you think about it. Um, 
uh, seems like it might be interesting for you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I will let you know how it goes. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to run along here, gentlemen. I will talk to you guys next time. Ups and doodads. All right. Hold on a second. I got to go uh, mute my devices because they're all going to go off during this segment. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> all right. Let's get into and it. And I'm sorry. Anybody that has the ladies in the tube, uh, you might not want to be playing this out loud. Put headphones on <laughs> because... It is going to be it is going to be fun. You mean put on your Echo Buds? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. We'll get to those in a second. First, we're going to talk about out of the 15 things that they announced, the Echo Studio, which is a $200 smart speaker with Dolby Atmos and 3D audio support mm-hmm. and pretty ugly like all of them. Yeah, but, you know, you can stick it in a corner. So that's kind of nice. I, I actually of all the things that they announced, most of them I found laughable. That one intrigues me just because I, I like good sound. Of course you do. Of course you do. And now, yes, the Echo Buds, which are the AirPod, uh, you know, competitors mm-hmm. and and other assistants. Out there. There, are, there are other companies that make these that are pretty much the same and, and on par with the price point. 129 bucks and uh, sweat proof, got Bose noise reduction in them. It's kind of nice. They actually look pretty decent. Yeah, I, w- I wish my AirPods had noise reduction in it. Yeah, and I like these since they are actual, you know, earbuds. They actually go in your ear instead of AirPods, which kind of hang out and yeah. look like you have ear snot. But <laughs> or it's very, very cold. <laughs> it's got icicles. Icicles. Uh, but you know, if I was in the market, I would try these out. Yeah, me too. I would but, definitely uh, try I'm these happy out. With my, well, I could be happier with my AirPods now. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see how this goes. Um, if anybody gets them, let us know. Their pre-order is up now. They come out uh, the day before Halloween. Mm-hmm. Now they've got Echo Frames, which are Alexa-enabled glasses. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand this product really. Here's the, here's what it is. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put this in T in a nutshell. Echo is like Frank's Red Hot. Amazon wants to put that shit on. Well, everything. yeah, I guess that's it, right? Because yeah, you know, I I. We, uh, I mean, I under <laughs> as much as I as much as I despise the Google Glass, I at least got it. Heads up display, all that sort of stuff. This is just glasses with speakers in it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's really. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then you've got the Echo Loop, which is a ring. But they can't call it ring with... because they own ring. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Yep. So we've got, uh, we've got the Echo Loop and I saw a, like a hands-on with that and it looks kind of dumb. Yep. Um, whatever. That's why we have self, you know what? The Echo Loop is $129.99. The Echo Frames are $179.99, and the Echo Buds are $129.99. Out of the three of those, I'm going to get the Buds, because the Buds do everything that the other two do already, and it's already in your ear. Yep. You don't have to... The, the Taking a call on the Echo Loop just looks ridiculous, because you have to like speak into your hand and hold it up to your ear. <laughs> it looks like uh, you know a 1960s sci-fi thing. <laughs> it's just Actually, silly. Actually, it's, it's kind of like something that it gets smart, right. yeah, yeah. even though it's not in the shoe. Yeah, see, if they had Echo shoes... Mm. That would be awesome. Well, you know, you know they're going to hear this, and of course, that's next. Well, they've already got the big, you know, kerfuffle over them stealing the uh, the birds, uh, all birds shoes. Right. So if they had Echo Birds, <laughs> that's, there you go, Echo Birds, Echo Location. That's what we'll call it. And of course, we've got a new dot with a clock. Right. Woo. Okay. Don't care about nope. that. The Echo Flex. Now the Echo Flex is interesting. It's kind of like an Echo Dot that you just plug into the wall for 30 bucks or 25 bucks. Right. Speaker's going to be crap on it. We know that. Yep. So, whatever. The one that here's the head scratcher, Echo Glow, which is just a, a light ball. Doesn't have a doesn't have a microphone, doesn't have a speaker. It's just a ball yeah. with lights I mean, in it. I get it for a kids room, but you can get you don't need one that is controllable by Alexa. Nope, 30 bucks for that one. Now we got the Echo Show 8. Mhm. Another one of those uh, TV ones, so it's eight inches, of course, and uh, 130 bucks. I, I love my show. Absolutely love it. It's great for being in touch with family. Okay, okay. And we got the Echo Speaker Gen 3, which is a speaker. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gen <laughs> <Yeah>. 3. <laughs> yeah, now we're getting to getting into the good stuff here. The Amazon Smart Oven, because why? Because why? <laughs> I, yeah, why? Okay. Uh, does not have a microphone on board, but it can, you know, it's controlled by your other echoes around the house. But you can, if you have an echo show, you can scan your packaged food and then it will set the microwave for you. Are we all so <laughs> stupid and lazy? No, here's the thing. We'll get to why that's actually kind of cool in a minute. Okay. okay. 
that's actually not a bad thing. Uh, the ring fetch, which is the the dog right. tag, <laughs> which you know works on the not yet ex- or semi existent sidewalk operating system that they're, they're working on for you know broad spectrum uh, IoT devices on the 900 megahertz spectrum. Right which apparently they said they rolled out here in LA, which is scary. Um, that's no price, no announcement on that. But, you know, if they do come out with these ring fetches, they need to come out with uh, dog traffic control systems <laughs> because the biggest problem in my neighborhood is everybody's got a dog. And like, you know, you're always bumping into people coming around corners. You want to be able to route the dogs away from each uh, other. Alpha Vector 5, we've got a pit bull coming in hot. Yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And uh, we've got the new Eero. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I don't know if I care about this one that much because the uh, new Eero. Are Eros, they currently advertising? Maybe you shouldn't have said that. Uh, no, no, no. I like these. These Well, they, they are advertising, but I, I've <laughs> got to say the Eero Pro that they sell is the one that I would get yeah. because the new ones, uh, they only go up to 550 megabits per second. And a lot of people now that's, you know, we've got gigabit now in, in our neighborhood. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. if you get the small ones, it's not really future proof. I've got two of the big pros and a bunch of beacons works great. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're in a low bandwidth area, they look nice and they still the beacons still work. You can plug those into the wall, but these are little desktop units. So but here's the here's the thing. They're cheap. That's the good bit. They're ninety nine bucks for one, two forty nine for three. Oh, that's good. So that's-, that's I mean, that's less than one of the pro stations that I have. And I have two of yeah. those. So, you know, for price, it's actually pretty good. And a bunch of new ring stuff that nobody cares about. Because <laughs> ring, <laughs> ring cameras well, suck. Uh, Don't did, buy are, any. Have they improved the cameras? Because it says something about 1080p streaming and all that sort of stuff. So that might, uh, if they've improved the cameras, that's your main beef. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I got the latest and greatest cameras when I got them not very long ago. All right. So. Uh, but these are in-house cameras, these stick-up cameras, okay. and they're, you know, n- yeah, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I don't need any more of those. Now, over at Vox Recode, whoever they are, they have a, an interesting uh, article saying, Amazon's Alexa-powered ambitions contradict its promises to protect your privacy. And it's a interesting piece, but it goes back to what we were saying, that just get over the fact that people are going to be listening to your calls if you don't explicitly go in and turn it off. This is a lot of words that just say, oh, they're they're making it opt out, not opt in. You can't in. have speech recognition at this point in time without humans reviewing things. It's it, The tech isn't there yet. So that's the deal. If you want to use speech recognition, people are going to be listening. Yep. And over at aboutamazon.com, there's a, a big propaganda piece that says, new ways Alexa makes life simpler and more convenient. Now, it's a ton of propaganda. Yep. Totally. But the kicker. The kicker and the one thing that everybody has talked about and the only thing that really should matter from this <laughs> entire echo chamber of, of announcements is actor and producer Samuel L. Jackson is the first celebrity voice we've created for Alexa using neural text-to-speech technology. Simply ask Sam to tell you jokes, information about the weather, set timers and alarms, play music and more, all with a bit of his own personality. You'll be able to interact with Samuel L. Jackson in explicit and non-explicit versions. As soon as they said explicit, take my 99 cents. I'm going to go buy a goddamn Echo just for this. Actually, that was what... Okay, okay, that's funny. Uh, two things here. First, I want to know how much they paid him. Oh, I'm sure they, they, he's still probably carrying the bags of yes, money into his because house. because it's got to be insane <laughs> amounts of money to, to own the rights to your voice, basically. Um, mm-hmm. so I want to see what other celebrities are coming along. That, that's going to be interesting to me because there are definitely some people. I would love to have a Darth Vader one. That would be awesome. And one of my favorite things I mm-hmm. ever had was a GP, GPS that allowed me to buy a Darth Vader voice for it. It was the best thing ever. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the, the best part about that is when you make a wrong turn and he says, your lack of, I find your lack yes, of face Yes, I love that. So, <laughs> so get on it, people. Get on that. I think the real big takeaway from all of this Amazon uh, information that we've got is the upsells and incels. Because we didn't have any of that before. You bought the device, you used the device. Now it's like, oh, if you want this feature, that's 99 cents. If you want this feature, you can add that on for a buck 99. If you want this feature, it's that is completely new and nobody's talked about it. And I'm like, wow, they're going to make all the monies. Yeah. Because you don't just buy the device anymore. You buy the device and now you have to buy all the options. 
That's the way it's going to mm-hmm. go, man. And and these guys are revving these echoes like so fast. It's like every week there's a new version. Yep. It's crazy. There's an article over at Venture Beat about Amazon Sidewalk and how their success is definitely anything but assured because there's so many competing uh, basically protocols out there that are going to compete with Sidewalk. Right. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting read, but there this is definitely not something that is guaranteed to survive so if you're interested in that go for it now here's the one that makes me happy amazon's echo show can now identify household pantry items held in front of its camera why you might ask is it a hot dog if you're blind and you have a can of something and you can't tell what it is alexa can now tell you but then Alexa can also go to the microwave, set the timer for you. You can open it and put your food in and, and it will cook it for you at the right temperature and the right time. Now, they worked with blind people to actually make this thing work. So it's not just, you know, some tech dude pulling an idea out okay. of his ass. And this is this is just what I like to see. This is the kind of use of tech that really gets me excited about the possibility of things that you can All do right. with it. I see that. And honestly, a lot of this stuff is the same way. I'm trying to become more optimistic and just even though we know the dark underbelly of all the crap that they're doing to us, I'm like, I'm 48. I don't have that much time left. I might have some fun with this stuff before I'm dead instead of just crapping on it every week. It's, you it's know? good to see you having a positive outlook. I'm trying to. I'm trying to just because it's like when we were kids growing up with this stuff, we would have killed for this kind of technology. And now what we do is like, yeah, but they're evil and they're taking all of our data. Who fucking cares anymore? They've got it. <laughs> I just yeah you know, I'm I'm turning into Facebook. I'm going to throw my hands in the air and just say might fuck well, it. Might take as well it all. rejoin. I don't Jason. care. I seriously, I'm going to go order all these echoes now. <laughs> <sighs> Excellent. There was a little bit of uh, a alt, uh, uh, of alternate Apple news. Now you've, we've always had to go through the Apple Store, which is great, and the Apple App Store, and they vet things and they check things out, and it's why it's been a fairly secure and uh, a safe operating system and environment right for the most part yes we've had no no challenges and no alternatives well somebody's just decided that must end you will no longer need to jailbreak your phone if you want to use alternative apps we are going to end the hegemony of the apple app store (laughs) (laughs) so this is a developer riley tested and he thinks he can bypass all the restrictions uh he's launching an unofficial air store that will theoretically let you push the boundaries of the iOS without either jailbreaking or worrying that Apple will pull access. Sort of. Now, the way he's going about it... Oh, you naive little man. You <laughs> naive, naive little, little man. man. So the way you're going about it is basically you have to set yourself up as a developer account and you sideload the apps from the air store, which Apple will shut yep. down in 10 minutes. Well, you have to have this, like, you have to install a little server in yep. your house to keep pinging it every week so it doesn't actually automatically get yes. uh, deleted. Thus making it not that simple. <laughs> no, it's not very simple at all. And Apple is going to put a, you know, put a stick in the spoke on this one as soon as it exactly. can figure it out. Well, you know, it, it's, it's clever. clever. It's, it's clever. clever, but he should have just kept it for him and yes. his friends, honestly. Oh, man. So I'm still using this Roadcaster Pro. Uh-huh. Talked about it on the show. It's it still drives me insane as we the 10 minutes it took us to get started this morning will attest to. Um, there is one feature, though, that I found last night that I thought was amazing. You can pair your phone to it over Bluetooth so mm-hmm. you can take phone calls with it and route it into your podcast. Oh, that's nice. It's really cool. But the reason I needed it was I'm sitting here. I'm work, I'm walking on my treadmill doing stuff. I want to listen to a podcast, but I wanted to listen to it through my studio monitors instead of on my AirPods. If only you had a lady in the tube. If I only had a lady, but it still wouldn't pick up. It doesn't. It's not going to match with Overcast, so I'm going to lose my place and things like that. I wanted to use Overcast on my phone. Hmm. So I, I'm like, oh, maybe I can try it with this. Paired it with the Rodecaster, and within like literally 30 seconds, I had beautiful audio coming out of my studio monitor. So if anybody has a Rodecaster Pro, try it. It's really fun. I, I know a lot of people are like, what am I going to do with this Bluetooth thing? I'm not taking phone calls. But it, what it does is it turns your entire studio into basically your phone without plugging it into anything. It just automatically plays. It was a really nice feature. That's all. And uh, finally, <sighs> we talked about the Lumi keyboards. Mm-hmm. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hmm. Shipping late. What? <laughs> Yeah, Kickstarter project <laughs> shipping late. Who would have who thunk it? Oh, gosh, you had such faith in them. They, but they say, they say that's next month. They're only going to be like a couple weeks behind. They, they're showing the production line. It's pretty impressive. But yes, mm-hmm. I know they're late. Fake video. Fake video. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a deep fake <laughs> with, with keyboards now. So I just said screw it and went out and bought some MIDI cables so I could hook up my 
my keyboard and start making music. So, all right, uh, I'm going to be calling you for <laughs> tech advice on that because I've <laughs> never done it before. Oh, good, good times ahead for you. This is uh, this is going to be a nightmare. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no problem. Closing shout outs. I would uh, like to give a shout out to Apple. But I didn't <laughs> but exactly can't. have the best time of it. So, yeah, I'm inching closer and closer to, to well, I said maybe PC was going to be my next computer until my computer blew up. But I'm inching closer and closer to going back to PC whenever this one dies. We'll see. The interesting thing about this that we've talked about kind of off and on is that and even with these security cameras that I have, when we were techs growing up, we mm-hmm. built shit and it was more fun. Yep. You know, it's like you said, like now it's just you're you're picking widgets and that's it. Because I was trying to get out, get out of you. I'm like, which one did you get? And you're like, I got a MacBook Air. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no shit, dumbass. What's in it? And then you're like, this, this. No, what else? I'm like, it comes in. It comes in three configurations. Who cares? It's boring. Like it's not. I remember three to five pages of drop down options every time I bought a computer in the past. That was fun. That's when I could really get into this tech specs with you. But with this, it's it's a MacBook Air, Jason. I know, but I'm trying to figure out which one you have because mine is, you know, mine is not the fastest. So I'm just wondering how much better yours runs than mine. (laughs) (laughs) Everything comes down to whipping out the dick, doesn't it? No, it's a game of, well, yeah, I guess it is because I was getting ready to say it's a game of inches. So there you go. And I'm missing my two extra inches on my monitor, let me tell you. Yeah, it, t- it takes some getting used to. It's going to take sure. some getting used to. All right. Well, go get your dongle on. <laughs> I'm you waiting for another back. dongle to show up so I can have my big extended monitor. Anyways, until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. To support the show and keep us on the air, go to patreon.com slash GOG. Toss us a few bucks a month and we'll love you forever. If you don't like Patreon but still want to support the show, you can give a one-time or recurring donation by just going to GOG.show and click that PayPal button. Your support really keeps us going, and we really appreciate it. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 380. From there, you can find links to old episodes, leave feedback, ask questions, and get links to stuff we like. Stay grumpy.